Welcome back to the channel guys, hope you are doing extremely well and this is your very own mass code on this side. So today's problem is for the one sequence, right? Now, how to write it down? What is the question saying? The question says that for the one sequence is actually something like this. For the zero term, that is the first term of the sequence is one, second term is one, third term is one. Now, now four term onwards, that is from this term up till infinity, what will happen? This term is actually the sum of these two, that is one plus one, it will give me two. This term is the sum of these two, that is 2. This term is actually uh, sum of 1 plus 2, that is 3. Now, afterwards, 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Afterwards, uh, 2 plus 3 gives me 5, right? So, it is just an extension of uh, Fibonacci. In Fibonacci, what do we do? Our n term is sum of n minus 1 plus n minus 2 at term, right? But here, it is equals to n minus 2 at term plus n minus 3 at term, right? The algorithm will be completely same. There is nothing difference between them. Instead of 1, it will be 2 here. Instead of 2, it will be 3 here. There are 3 approaches for solving the Fibonacci. And similarly, there are 3 approaches to solve the further one sequence. What is the first approach to solve the Fibonacci? It is recursion, right? It is recursion. This is the simplest approach. What is the recursion saying? Okay, recursion says something like this. So I will be defining a function f and I will be taking a parameter n. Now suppose if n is less than equals to 2, in that case return 1. This is for further 1, right? Return 1. Otherwise, what will you do? You will say return f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 3, right? Okay. So what will the tree look like? Suppose I call for n equals to 5. That is the fifth term I want. So what will happen? So n equals to 5 will call for... Uh, and equals to 5 will call for 5 minus 2 that is 3 and 5 minus 3 will call for 2. 3 will call for 3 minus 2 that is uh, 1 and 3 minus 1 that is 3 minus 3 that is 0. Both of them will be returning 1. 0 will also return 1. 2 will also return 1. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2. So 2 plus 1 gives me 3. My answer to the answer uh, 5 will be 3. Right? Now if I but what is the uh, time complexity here? So this is a recurrence relation of type something like this t of n equals to t of n minus 1 not t of t of n minus 2 plus t of n minus 3 right so it will be a exponential time complexity exponential right i always obviously want to reduce the time complexity how will i do it how will i do it again so simple use memo memoization use memoization right so i know that the maximum value maximum n value can be n so i want an array which has an index n for index equals to n i will have to have the minimum length of n plus 1 right my length should be of n plus 1 so what will i do i will say vector of int and dp or oh, vector of dp right n plus 1 initialize all of them by minus 1 now what will happen i will call the same function f but i will send the dp with it right i will call n uh, f of n dp right and the function call will look something like this i will send the dp array obviously by reference and if dp of n is not equals to minus 1 in that case return dp of n and here dp of n equals to f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 3 as simple as that right now what is the time complexity so we are taking o of n plus 1 time complexity here because essentially we are filling the array of length n plus 1 but it is taking some recursion stack space also right and the space complexity also n plus 1 can we try to optimize it yes plus recursion stack space plus recursion stack space so first of all let us remove this recursion stack space how will we do it i will i will use a tabulation approach right i will use the tabulation approach so what does tabulation approach is that don't fall in the cases of re recursion just do some everything in the table so i will what i will do i will create a dp array of size n plus 1 again initialize all of them by minus 1 now what will i do I will say suppose I want to find for n equals to 6 right so what will I do I will create an array of length 7 right this is index 0 this is index 1 2 3 4 5 6 and uh, okay I want up till 6 right okay so this is I don't want this right okay now 0 1 2 are filled with 1 because n less than equals to 2 I am filling it with 1 so 1 1 1 for 3 I will call for 1 and 0 so 1 plus 1 it gives me 2 for 4 I will see 2 and 1 so 1 plus 1 gives me 2 for 5 I will see 3 and 2 for 1 plus 2 gives me 3 for 6 I will see 3 and 4 so 2 plus 2 gives me 4 right okay so 
my recursion co my uh, code is looking at something like this so i will create a vector of int dp right vector of int dp let us name uh, call them by one right let us initialize all of them by one and now what will i do i will say for i equals to what is the first one that is taking the sum it is three so for i equals to three up till and what will happen dp of i equals to dp of n minus 2 plus dp of n minus 3 that's all and i can at last return dp of n plus dp of n i can at last return dp of n which is equals to 4 my answer will be 4 for n equals to 6 again what is the time complexity here so i'm using the recurs uh, linear time complexity so o of n is a time complexity but the space complexity is o of n plus 1 I want to reduce the space complexity furthermore. So what will I do? In the case of DP, what other things we can do? First, memoization, followed by tabulation, followed by space optimization. So it is a time for looking at the space optimization. So at each step, I know that I want n minus 2th value and n minus 3th value, right? The loop will remain same. This loop will be exactly same. Instead of DP n minus 2, DP n minus 3, instead of storing a vector, I will be using some variables. So something like this will be happening. So Suppose my function is f, I get a value of n. Now what will happen? If n equals is less than equals to 2, in that case return 1. Right, that is sorted. Now, what will I do instead? I will say n minus 2 equals to 1, n minus 3 equals to 1, n minus 1 equals to 1. Right, and now I will say my end answer is initialized right now. Okay, so suppose I got n equals to 3, right? n equals to 3. How many recursion call will take place? Like uh, suppose I have 1, 1, 1 and I want to position this. So for this position I have to add these two. This is happening only one time. If I have to add this one then first I want this one and for this one I will be calling this and th or this and this right. So two times. So for 3 it is iteration is occurring one time. For 4 it is occurring two times. So what will happen? So for i equals to 0 up till n minus 3 right because i am taking iterations two times right so that is n minus 2 minus 1 right so answer plus equals to n minus 2 plus n minus 3 after that change your values that is n minus 3 will now become n minus 2 n minus 2 will now become n minus 1 and i am representing minus by underscore right okay n minus 1 will now equals to answer and at, at the end of the loop you can return your answer return answer that's all right what is the time complexity now so you are using a time complexity of n minus 3 only let us take it as n only and the space complexity is now 1 because we are not using any vector or anything to store all the elements we are just using three variables which are of use to us right now it is time for us to see the actual code right i hope you were able to understand it the problem is actually simple so i didn't delve into the much of the depth because it was not necessary today so let us move to the code now Alright, so here is the coding section. Okay, before starting with the code, I would like to request you to please subscribe to my channel if you are new here because it really motivates me. Now it is time for us to see the code. So, if n is less than equals to 2, return uh, 1, right? Otherwise, int n minus 1 equals to 1, n minus 2 equals to 1, n minus 3 equals to 1, and initialize your answer. Now, for int i going from 0 up till n minus 2, i plus plus, what will happen? answer equals to n minus 2 plus n minus 3 now what will happen i will change the value so n minus 3 will now become n minus 2 in the updated value system n minus 2 will now become equals to n minus 1 and n minus 1 will now become equals to answer and now you can simply return your answer at the end of the loop let us try to compile and run it it should run fine i guess it is running fine for the sample test case let us try, try, try it for the hidden test cases as well Oh, it is giving some error. Why it is giving some error? Okay, here is the problem. The output may be too large, so compute the answer in modulus 10 to 197, right? So what will I do? I will create a mode value, so int mode equals to 1e9 plus 7. So I will say at the time of addition, just take the mode value. Instead of the whole value, take the mode value. So percentile mode. Let us try it now. Should run fine, I guess. Okay, let us try it for the, uh, some hidden test cases as well. It is running and okay, 181 day streak, guys. So, thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Hope you were able to learn something from the video. And uh, the binary tree series is getting uploaded daily. Linked list series is about to end, and the stack series is about to begin. So, if you have not subscribed to my channel, 
please subscribe it because if you will not you will miss something really important okay so thank you have a nice day we'll meet again tomorrow till then keep coding and stay tuned thank you have a nice day